Doing what I do here on my YouTube channel, I get to talk to many folks about how they're utilizing their Tonex pedals, and I get many, many questions, actually so many, that I'm unable to even get to answer them all. It would take me all day, every day to get to them all, so I like to just do videos, hopefully people see them, and then they can kind of take what I talk about here and hopefully apply it to their situation. One of the ongoing problems that so many folks ask me about is why there's such a discrepancy in sound between Tonex software and Tonex pedal. The way that this ecosystem works is we are creating the tone model on Tonex software. And we're basically auditioning them on there. We're listening to them on there. We're tweaking them on there. And then once we're happy, we transfer those to Tonex pedal. And the hope is that they're going to sound identical because we did all this work getting to sound great on our software. We want them to be that same sound on Tonex pedal. The problem is, is the interface that we are plugging into. All audio interfaces are going to have a different amount of input gain, shall we say, that when we plug a guitar into the instrument input, it's going to hit the software with a certain amount of level. Well, for Tonex pedal to sound identical to the software, the level that the tone model is hit with would have to be identical between our audio interface and our Tonex pedal. And this is where the confusion lies and a lot of folks don't seem to understand how this works. And today I wanna to put this to rest and I really wanna give you kind of an in-depth look, not only how we can make these measurements ourselves, but what exactly is Tonex pedal doing? Now we did have a problem when it first came out. There was an 8.6 dB boost after the A to D converter. So basically, unless you ran your audio interface extremely hot, almost too hot to even be useful because depending on the guitar we're playing, we're gonna have to constantly be adjusting that so we're not clipping. We could never get the tone models to sound the same between the software and the pedal. The, the pedal always tended to sound more oversaturated, but with one of the firmware updates, it was moved back so that the zero dB was kind of more in line with what working with an audio interface at a lower instrument input gain level would be with the ability to crank it up if you wanted to. So nobody's saying you can't do that if you want to use it that way. You absolutely can, but it just gave a more kind of realistic usage of it where zero dB kind of made more sense, where zero dB didn't actually represent a eight plus dB boost. So this could be one of the most important things you can know to making sure that your Tonex pedal is working the way that you want it to. So I'm also gonna showcase later in the video my brand new Mars 74X Ultimate Tone Model Bundle. It's a beautiful set of captures I recently completed that are available at my website below of my hand-wired Marshall 1974X amplifier love the amplifier very addictive and the tone models turned out really beautifully i'll have the full demo video at the end of the video and the links are below if you want to grab that after we have our discussion you can go check those out if you're so inclined first we're going to dive in and take a look at just how we can make these measurements so we can know what our audio interface is doing have a little more knowledge about that and what tonex pedal is doing then we're going to actually look at once we have this test signal we can use to measure things what's actually going on in tonex pedal and a few things you have to be careful of then we're going to finish it off with an actual audio example so that we can actually verify things with our ears and see that all these measurements we made are actually accurate and i hope that this gives you a better idea of how to make sure your tonex pedal is going to react how you want it to regardless of how you set your audio interface we need to know how we're setting it so that we can make the appropriate setting on tonex pedal so things match up and then hopefully this will put to rest any problems folks have with when they've played and auditioned their tones in the Tonex software, move to Tonex pedal and everything kind of falls apart and is too gained up or too saturated or under gained. And hopefully this can put that to bed and help a lot of folks. So without further ado, let's head over. We're going to pull the multimeter out and we're going to get some test signals going. And then we'll talk about how we can get all these measurements done. Hope you enjoy. All right. So here's how we're going to create our test signal that uh, we would utilize to get this zero dBU signal that we can feed into our audio interface or Tonex pedal to actually measure the amount of headroom that we're getting from these different devices so that we can calibrate things without guessing at it and know precisely that things are gonna work. So many people tell me, I, I play in Tonex software and then I transfer to Tonex pedal, it sounds totally different. We wanna know that we're calibrated accurately. So this is going to be the way to do that. So what I've done here within Cubase is just created a little track that's going to feed out of a line output and I use my little test generator here. Now I used 400 Hertz uh, specifically because that's the highest signal that is going to be accurate for my digital multimeter here. So that's going to work for me. I have a sine wave and I have it set at minus 11.99 because that's what gets me the zero dB. So basically we take the cord that's coming out of our 
audio interface, we make our two connections for our multimeter and we set our multimeter to measure the AC voltage. We turn that on and you'll notice here that I am getting 0.775 volts or 775 millivolts, which is equivalent to zero dBU. When we then take this cable, plug it into an audio interface instrument input, it's now going to tell us in our DAW how many dB of headroom we have before we hit zero dBFS, which is the clipping point where we can't surpass without destroying the audio essentially. Anybody can do this, it's going to work out really well and we can be 100% confident that we are going to be measuring this correctly. So I can feed this signal into my instrument input on my audio interface and calibrate exactly where I wanna have it so it can stay consistent. So we're not always changing it for every guitar. And like I've mentioned, I like to have mine calibrated right around minus 11 coming from the world of Line 6 Helix, which I believe when I measure it is around minus 11.3. I like to work in that range. It gives me lots of headroom, regardless of what guitar I'm using. Even my highest output guitars, I'm not anywhere near clipping. I'm well above any worry about signal to noise ratio damaging things. And it's just a real nice sweet spot for me. And I keep it very consistent across the board by utilizing that. So every interface I get, I do this, I plug this in, I set that that to minus 11 or right in that ballpark. A lot of interfaces are going to be set around there anyways. Every interface is going to be different, but a lot of them at minimum gain are going to be around minus 12, minus 12 and a half, minus 11. You know, a difference between one dB is not going to be earth shattering stuff, but if you get to three, four dB difference, then it's going to probably be a, a noticeable difference where things are going to sound more saturated or if it's too low, less saturated. So this is how you can set up this test. Now we're going to take this little cable that we've just measured as zero dBU, and we're gonna plumb that into Tonex pedal and figure out what exactly is going on. And then we can also do it with our audio interface, figure out what's going on with that, how we work with it, and then make sure that the two are matched up perfectly. All right, so here I am now in Cubase. And what I actually have set up here is Tonex pedal set as the audio interface within Cubase. So this is gonna be important to be able to measure what's going on. So I've taken that zero dBU signal that we just created uh, utilizing our multimeter and another audio interface to create this, this signal that's gonna give us that zero dBU level so that we can feed it into Tonex pedal and figure out what the headroom of this interface is so that we can more accurately match it to our interface. And as I've mentioned, I like to run my interface. I've done this for many years at minus 11 to a minus 11.5. Uh, it's coming from the world of using the Line 6 Helix. If you plug your guitar into the Line 6 Helix with the guitar input pad turned off, that instrument input, it is working at that level right around I, when I measure it, it's around minus 11.3 I mean that could be off just for margin of error of my multimeter and, and whatnot but those 0.1 and 0.2 dB uh, settings or differentials are not going to make any audible difference we will not be able to hear that so I just find that that's a really wonderful amount of headroom to leave uh, it just to me is more realistic because I don't have to constantly be moving that input up and down depending on the guitar I'm using if I have a lower output guitar I've got a lot of signal above any sort of noise floor there's not going to be any problem with signal to noise ratio but I've also got a lot of headroom above that if I grab a guitar that is much hotter and in fact my hottest guitar that I have I think has a DiMarzio tone zone pickup in it it doesn't even come close to peaking so I can just plug in I can allow the guitar to put out what it puts out and I use different guitars for different purposes so I don't always want to be changing that input gain to crank my single coil equipped strat all the way up to almost clipping and then have to turn my super strat with the tone zone pickup all the way down. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I picked that strat because it has lower output pickups and it's gonna react differently with the amp it's plugged into or the tone model it's plugged into. So I like to set it at that minus 11. So here's the thing, if I'm used to working at minus 11 in Tonex, software because that's where I have my audio interface set then when I plug into the pedal is it going to give me the same sound we don't know that until we measure it well there's a couple ways we can do this I have Tonex set up with this tone model of mine from my Mars 74X Ultimate bundle which I'll play you the demo video of later at the end of the video after our discussion and the links are below if you want to grab it it's a great tone model collection of my hand-wired Marshall 1974X amp really killer amp just loving this can't get enough of it and these tone models turned out really wonderfully but I have it bypassed right now 
So what we're going to see here is I've taken this zero dBU signal that we've created and I've plumbed it into the instrument input here out of my reamp box. And I've measured very carefully that we are actually feeding it with the 0.775 volt or zero dBU signal. So that's great. That's going to be working just as we want it to. So what do we get over here? Well, you'll notice I have two inputs set up. And this is because Tonex is, as I mentioned, the audio interface going into Cubase. So mono in one and mono in two. Now, it depends on how we have Tonex set up that's going to determine what's being fed to these two inputs. They could just be the stereo out of a Tonex tone model. So the reverb would be in stereo. That's really the only stereo component we have within Tonex pedal. But that's going to capture sort of this would be left, this would be right. So mono in left, mono in to right. But if we come into global settings, this is very important stuff we need to understand. So we can scroll all the way down to USB out. Since this is set as the audio interface, the USB out is set to dual. If I set this to stereo, you're gonna notice something now. Both of these are going to be, as I mentioned, left and right. So this is just gonna be the stereo output of the process sound. So if I engage the tone model, you'll see that both of these will now drop to this level here because they're now being processed. So they're going through an overdriven sound, they're being compressed. It depends on how I have my output level set here. I could turn those down, you see how it affects that. I could go into my compressor and, 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 and adjust that however I need to adjust it. But if I bypass that, we go back up to just that direct signal. So this is telling us basically, going into here with a zero dBU signal, is basically giving us 8 dB of headroom. It says minus 7.9, you know, probably margin of error for, for measurements with the uh, multimeter and whatnot. But let's just call it minus 8. So we have 3 dB hotter signal just by plugging into Tonex pedal versus, say, a Line 6 Helix if we were using the Helix as an interface to feed Tonex software. Or how I have my other audio interfaces calibrated so they're in and around that minus 11. So this tells us something very important. If we're calibrated for 11 dB of headroom, above zero dBU, and that's what we're feeding Tonex software with, when we take that same tone model, feed it into Tonex pedal, we're going to be hitting it 3 dB hotter. So we're gonna have a 3 dB boost in front of it, which isn't going to really raise the volume necessarily, as we'll see later, but it's actually just going to saturate the tone model more. Now, there is another way we can set this up. If we come into global settings here, again, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to USB out, we click that, we can go stereo or we can go dual. Now, when I go to dual, you don't see any change here. And there's good reason for that because right now I have the tone model bypass. But what if I engage it now? We see that USB one or mono in one actually drops because now this signal is being processed in mono and this signal is still just grabbing our DI'd guitar track. So this is the guitar hitting the converters and then going straight out and being recorded dry. This can be a very useful thing if let's say we wanted to grab our monotone model, we set up a track, we, we record off mono in one and that's our process tone model, but we want to maybe grab a DI track just so that we can reamp it later. That would be wonderful. I do that constantly and I that gives me the ability to reuse music demos for different tones. I can just reamp them again. So, And that's another reason why I like to capture at one set input level so that I have consistency across the board and I don't have to worry about fiddling around trying to remember what guitar I used and not knowing where I actually had that set, which would just be a disaster. So you can see the converters here are giving us 8 dB of headroom above 0 dBU. So basically Tonex pedal is about 3 dB louder than what I would hit it with. Now this is very interesting because it makes perfect sense. When Tonex pedal first came out, there was an 8.6 dB boost that they had built into it after the A to D converter. So basically what was happening is if you were used to running, let's say like myself, all of your instrument inputs on your audio interfaces at a, let's say 11 dB of headroom, so minus 11, then when you went into Tonex pedal, not only were you getting the 3 dB boost that is inherently the difference between that minus 11, this is running at minus eight, you were also adding another 8.6 dB on top of that, bringing you to almost 12 dB more signal hitting the front of your tone model. No wonder if you were used to running your instrument input with a little more headroom and keeping it lower and not always cranking it up to clipping and then pulling it back, no wonder that literally thousands of people were loading their beautiful tone models onto Tonex 
pedal and going, they're destroyed. They sound terrible. And I had endless comments. And then, so when the firmware came along that brought the zero DBU setting on the global input trim back in line more with what most audio interfaces were without this artificial 8.6 dB of boost, now we kind of solve that problem. If you just leave it set at zero, you're going to be more in the ballpark, as we're going to hear later when I give you some audio examples. But still, what I would do, I would still run this at probably, where is it here? Trim in, minus three. And then you're going to basically see now that we are at minus 10.9. Now we are going to hit the front of the tone model with this DI track at the same level we're used to with our other audio interfaces. So if you capture this with the minus three setting, you're going to get what you're used to with your other audio interfaces if you work like I do and have those settings set the way I do at that minus 11 setting. Now, it doesn't mean that minus 11 is the only setting you can use. Obviously, if you set your other audio interfaces at minus eight dB of headroom, then you could just run this at zero and you will get the exact same sound out of it. Now, the problem is, is when you get into this plus eight setting, which is, I believe, the default. I never run it there. Now we're into clipping. So what's going to happen is, if we even put a fairly low output level guitar into Tonex pedal, we're going to be clipping. And if we're capturing this DI, there's going to be a big problem because it's going to be useless. It's going to be distorted and clipped. So let's do this. Let me take this output... And I'm going to plug my guitar directly in here now to Tonex pedal. And I'm going to use my Gibson SG with burst bucker pickups. This is not a high output guitar. Let's see what happens. So I'm on the bridge pickup and let's see what, what happens. So basically, it would be useless because I am clipping immediately. on hard hits. If I go to the neck pickup, I'm way too close to the edge there and I don't understand why I would do this. Why would I bring this up to 8 dB? Now you'll notice it's not affecting what's happening on the process signal as much though, right? So if I come over here, bring this back to zero, so what it's telling me is that on this process signal, all it's doing is hitting the front of the tone model harder. It's not giving me any more volume. But here on the DI track, we are getting much more volume. And obviously, if I go way up there, just clipping all the time. So again, if I was to set this back to where I want it, where I always calibrate my system, I would be running this at minus three. And now I've got loads of headroom. and it's gonna give me what I want. So I don't have the audio up and running for you guys to hear, but you can just see the meters. This is more just about the meters being on and letting you hear what's going on. So I think you see now why I'm suggesting, and for my captures, the way that I capture my tone models, the ideal setting to get the most realistic sound would be having the global input trim set at minus three. But at zero, it's still gonna be fine. It's gonna be slightly more saturated. Anything above that, you're gonna start changing that tone. But I think you see now why running this up at plus eight is probably not the best idea. If you really feel you need more gain out of it, as I mentioned in the last video, if you have this set at minus three or zero, and you feel like you need it for a particular guitar to hit the front end harder, just use the gain control. It's the exact same thing. Go to the software, use the gain control. It's identical. This is a global setting. Set it once, leave it alone, use your gain control. You can have the full range of control that you have right here. And I think that that's going to be a much better way to work. So I really hope that that kind of clarifies how this is all working. So really, if we can now go to our audio interface, send the test signal in, go to your DAW, see what your headroom is, see where you're setting it and see what your reading is and how it compares to Tonex pedal, that will allow you to make the proper global input settings to match what you're used to on your audio interface. That's not up to me to tell you how you have to run it. I'm telling you how I run it, uh, but you can run it however you want. If you're only leaving 5 dB of headroom or 3 dB of headroom, then that's fine. You would set this appropriately, knowing that this at 0 dB is 8 dB of headroom, and if you're running 5 dB of headroom on your audio interface, when you feed it with a 0 dB of signal, you would just raise this up by 3 dB and you'd be exactly the same, as we're about to hear 
in the audio example. So it's all fine and dandy to measure this stuff, but how does it work with audio? And I'm going to take you there now and let you hear how this all works. And you can use your ears to kind of prove this even further and see that this is the way you should be looking at things. So now that we actually understand how all of that works, the final step would be to actually put our ears to some audio to kind of prove to ourselves that this does work. So what I've done here, very similar to the last video I did about the difference between the gain knob and the global input trim, is I have an instance of Tonex software and I also have a DI here that I recorded of just my direct guitar track. So I've basically duplicated it. It's the same track here playing into Tonex software. And then I take this exact same performance, exact same track volume matched. I feed that out through a line output of my audio interface into my reamp box coming out of that, making sure that the signal is calibrated just perfectly, that what's going into it is what's coming out of it. And then I send that into the Tonex pedal so that we can really determine whether or not the software and the pedal sound the same when we have gone through what we've gone through to calibrate the input level. So we already know that with Tonex pedal, we have 8 dB approximately, very, very close to 8 dB of headroom above 0 dBU. And I like to run my system at around minus 11, minus 11 and a half. The, the decimals, the 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dB are not likely going to be audible and aren't that important. So it's, it's more just getting it in that ballpark, around minus 11. So these particular DIs have been captured with my audio interface set so that it's, there's 11 dB of headroom above zero dBU, which is where I have calibrated my system for, for years now and where I've always worked. Coming from the Line 6 Helix, that's basically the input of the Line 6 Helix, and I measure it around minus 11.3. So again, the 0.3 is not a big deal. So basically, that's what we have. We have these set and have been captured at that minus 11 setting, uh, that much headroom. And that's going to give it a 3 dB differential between what the sort of default setting of 0 dB on the global input trim is going to be on Tonex pedal. So it would make sense then that to get these to match up, it's not going to work if I am running Tonex pedal over here. We'll just get to our trim in. If I'm running it at 0, I'm going to be hitting the front of that amp model with 3 dB more gain just by plugging directly into this versus let's say I was using my Line 6 Helix as an audio interface feeding Tonex pedal. So very interesting. Let's see what the difference is and if it does make a difference that we can hear. So here is the software. This is as this was captured when I made the capture. And these are the captures of my Mars 74X Ultimate Tone Model Collection, which is a really killer set of tone models. It's available on my website, the link below, of my amazing hand-wired Marshall 1974X amplifier that I recently acquired. So again, if I just take the Tonex software off and play this for you. We get an idea of that's just the dry guitar. And there's the level that I am working at. Now, if I play that through the software, That's how it sounds. Now, with the pedal at zero dB on the input trim, this should be a little more saturated when we go back and forth between the pedal. So when I unsolo this, you're now hearing the same track reamp through the pedal. Now, keep in mind, we are, as I mentioned in the last video, going through uh, a couple more stages of analog to digital and digital to analog conversion. So I guess technically that should change the sound, but the converters are so good these days. I don't think it's something that's going to be overly audible. As you'll hear here, these two different scenarios sound almost identical. One once that input gain is matched. So here is the zero dB setting. So this is being hit into that same tone model with three dB of extra gain. Let's see if we can hear a difference. Let's compare that to just the software. And let's just do this. Let's just shorten this down so we can really focus on one or two chord hits.
And I think you can tell it is more saturated. Now, if I come over here to the global input trim, lower this very precisely to minus three, which is now going to match exactly what Tonex software is being hit by. These should sound identical now. Let's take a listen. I don't think anybody's gonna argue that they now sound about as close as you can possibly have them. Now, as I play the reamp track, I'm gonna adjust the input trim and you'll just hear how saturated and how out of whack this is gonna become as I boost this up to that setting of plus eight that so many people seem fascinated with using. So we can hear it really changes the sound of this tone model and just hits the front end so much harder that it's going to saturate more, which it's doing. Now, I mean, if that's what you like and you're liking the sound of that, then by all means, go ahead and do it. I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't, but just be aware of what is happening, what you're doing, where your starting points are. So if you can know what your normal instrument level input is that you're always running on your audio interface when you're utilizing Tonex software and auditioning presets and tone models, we can easily then come over now knowing that Tonex runs with 8 dB of headroom above 0 dBU. We can match these without any question and we hear how this works, right? So the other interesting thing is if I was to take Tonex software, let's just minimize that, and I'm gonna come over to where I actually have it here. Now you'll notice that I have it set to post fader. So, so I haven't, you know, I, I can have this pre-fader so that if I move the fader up and down, it's only going to affect the output volume, but I don't want that right now. What I want to do is move this to the post-fader as it is here. Now, what you'll hear when I play the software, is if I adjust the fader, it's going to adjust the input, hitting the front of the tone model, much like the input trim here. So then I should actually be able to match the two up now by adding 8 dB of input to the software as well. And again, you see how we're much closer now compared to if I stayed over here at zero. So, I mean, if you're used to always running your instrument inputs on your audio interface really high up to peaking and then backing it off and changing that constantly for each guitar, you're really going to always be fiddling with levels and it's just going to be a bit of a mess. That's why I like to calibrate my instrument inputs on my audio interface and it's going to be different for everyone to that minus 11, maybe minus 12. Some of them are basically, a lot of the modern interfaces are set just around minus 11 and a half, 12, 12 and a half when you have the instrument input and minimum gain. So you could almost just leave it alone and just work with it that way. Or you can use the test signals as I showed earlier to calibrate things so you know precisely what you're getting. Work for that minus 11, then you know that that's gonna equal a minus three on the global input trim here on your Tonex pedal. If you decide to go a little higher than that and maybe you wanna run around minus eight, then you're gonna set your zero dB here on your Tonex pedal. But if you are running this up at plus eight, where it kind of reads okay with a lot of sort of lower output guitars, that's gonna actually be equivalent to having almost no headroom on a normal audio interface. And then you're constantly gonna have to be changing that around depending on the guitar you're using. And that's a situation that I personally want to avoid. So I hope that that sheds some light on this and kind of clarifies things and makes it a little bit clearer. All right, what do you guys think? I really hope that that was helpful. I, I really do. This has been such an issue, and it seems like something a lot of folks don't seem to understand. They talk about, oh, use your input trim, your global input trim to get more volume out of your preset. It doesn't, that's not what that's for. I really feel my opinion on it is set your global input trim once, set it so that it matches how you run your audio interface when you're utilizing the software, and then leave it alone. 
worry about boosting volume uh, after the tone model so it's not going to if you need more volume or lowering the volume after the tone model you know is that's not going to affect what's hitting the front of the tone model and we can also just simply use the gain knob as I talked about in the video last week instead of going to global input trim and adjusting there simply use the gain knob it does the exact same thing and you can save that per preset so if you have a preset where you feel like I wish I could hit the front of this a little harder turn your gain up maybe from five to six or from five to seven, that's going to give you what you want. You save it. It's going to be recalled with your preset. You never have to go touch your global input trim again. So I really hope this was helpful. Please share this with as many folks as you can. I think it's really important that folks do understand this. And I think it could help a lot of folks just have a, a more enjoyable experience and save them a lot of trouble and time in making sure that everything is acting the way that they want it to. So again, please like the video. Please share it with anybody you think would get some use out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. And I'm going to leave you today with a demo video of my brand new and one of my favorite sets of tone models, the Mars 74X Ultimate Tone Model Collection, available at the link below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the music on the way out. Thanks again for sharing your time with me. Ciao for now.